Good day, learners. Welcome to Fiscal Science Grade 11 lesson. My name is Tabang Mongatani. This lesson is brought to you by Saibono Discovery Center in collaboration with Houting Department of Education. Learners, today we'll be doing revision on electric circuits. Uh, firstly, we'll be looking at what you have done in grade 10. And if you don't remember any of this, you need to go to uh, grade 10 lesson and you do your revision on this because they're gonna help you into electric circuits in grade 11. The following, define the potential difference across the end of, the con of a conductor. In simple, we're gonna say potential difference is equal to work multiply by a charge. Again, you must be able to state the potential difference. Define EMF, define terminal uh, potential difference. Do calculation using the potential difference is equal to work multiply by charge. Define current strength. Calculate the current strength in a conductor using the following equation current is equal to charge multiplied by time. Define one coulomb, indicate the direction of conventional current in a circuit diagram using the arrows. Explain why a battery in a circuit goes flat by referring to the energy transformation in the battery and the resistors in a circuit. Know that the current is the same throughout each resistor in a series circuit. Describe the series circuit as potential difference divider. Calculate the total resistance of uh, resistors connected in series. The formula that you're gonna use is RT is equals to R1 plus R2. Know that the potential difference in the same uh, uh, the potential difference is the same across resistors connected in parallel. Describe parallel circuits as current divider because the total current in the circuit is equal to the sum of the branch, branch current. Calculate the total resistance of a resistor connected in parallel by using this formula. 1 over R total is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Solve problem using R, which is resistance, equals to V over I, which is volt, uh, potential difference divided by current. For the circuit containing resistors that are connected in series and or in parallel, we work with maximum of four resistors, learners. And then in our exam guideline for grade 11 on electric circuits, we'll be focusing on the following. You must be able to state Newton's law in words. You must be able to interpret the data or the graph on the relationship between the current and potential difference and resistors at a constant temperature. State the difference between the ohmic and non-ohmic conductors and give an example of each. Solve the problem using the formula R is equals to V over I, where R is a resistance, V is a potential difference, and I is a current. For circuit containing resistors that are connected in series and or parallel. Remember also in grade 11, we are using the maximum of four resistors in a circuit. We continue, we must be able to define power as the rate at which electrical energy is converted in electric circuits. And then we must know the unit, SI unit for power, which is what, and in simple, symbol is what, cap, uh, capital letter W. And then we say also, what is a one joule of energy converted in one hour? And the practical units for power is kilowatt hour. 
which means that our grade 11, this symbol, kilowatt hour, you can see it on your uh, 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 receipt after you bought uh, electricity from ESCOM. We, we use the power equation to calculate power, energy, time, current, potential difference, resistance, and the heat produced by the current and the resistance, grade levels. And then we're going to go back to, we're starting with Ohm's law. Our Ohm's law, the formula for Ohm's law, it's what? Potential difference is equal to current multiplied by resistance. Where our V stands for potential difference, I stands for current, and R stands for resistance. From the uh, triangle, we can see that we have potential difference, current, and the resistance. And we know that from grade 10, we have learned how to use this triangle in order to come up with the correct formula. Like, for instance, we know that if we start at the top of the triangle, we say V, then V, our V is going to be equal to current multiplied by what? Resistance. But if we're going to start with I, we say I is equal to V because it's at the top. Then it's going to be V divided by, by R grade levels. You can see now when you look at V and R, it gives you what? A fraction. That means we're going to say current is equal to potential difference divided by what? Divided by uh, resistance. And if you're going to start with resistance, then we say resistance is going to be what? Equals to uh, potential difference divided by what? By current. And we continue grade levels. We say now V, which is stands for potential difference, is measured in volts, which is simple for volts is V. And I stands for current, and which is measured in what? Ampere, and the symbol for ampere is A, caps A, A grade levels. And R stands for resistance, and resistance is measured in ohms, and the symbol for ohm is what? Is a sigma. You can see from our slide, uh, grade levels. And then we say, how do we state Ohm's law? Ohm's law state that the current flowing through the conductor is directly proportional to the voltage across the conductor. And, if the, te and the temperature must be kept constant. We can see this law is already giving us the relationship between the current and the potential difference. And we say that the relationship between the current and the voltage, the voltage at uh, grade 11, remember, it is what? It is a potential difference. That means the relationship between the current and the potential difference, it gives you a straight line. What does that mean? It means that it is directly proportional because when current increases, the potential difference also increases. Then, if you have to calculate the gradient of this straight line graph, it must give you a resistance. Okay, we're continuing. What is the difference between ohmic conductor and non-ohmic conductor? We need to know this, grade levels, because they will always come in the exam. We have five differences. For, non, uh, for ohmic conductor, we say ohmic com conductors are the type of conductors that work in the principle of Ohm's law. What does that mean? It means that ohmic conductors, they, they always follow uh, Ohm's law. They don't deviate. They are not deviating from Ohm's law. They always follow Ohm's law. And non-ohmic conductors, they deviate from Ohm's law. Number two, we say for a, vary, a, a varying uh, current 
and voltage. Voltage, which remember it is what? Potential difference. The resistance of the ohmic conductor remains constant. You, you have seen from the graph that the, the resistance is always increasing uh, uh, constantly so. Uh, it's, it's, it's always constant because of what? When a uh, current increases, the potential difference also increasing, then the resistance remain what? The constant. Okay? And for non-ohmic conductor, we say the resistance of non-ohmic uh, non conductor varies on changing current, voltage, and temperature. What does that mean, uh, grade levels? It means that when you change the current, or when you change potential difference, or when you change the temperature, the resistance for non-ohmic conductor will always changes. Okay, number three, the relationship between the current and the voltage is linear. We have seen it from the graph that when the current increases, the voltage also increases. That is why it gives us a linear graph. But for non-ohmic uh, conductor, the relationship between the current and the voltage is not linear. Are we together, grade levels? Number four, we say examples of ohmic conductors are metals and resistors. Grade levels, please write this down so that when they ask you, give examples of ohmic conductors, you are able to give these two uh, 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 examples, which is metals and resistance. Okay, for non-ohmic conductors, examples of non-ohmic conductors are diodes and semiconductors. Are we together, grade levels? Yes. Write this one down also, because in exam, when they ask you, give two types of non-ohmic conductor, then you are able to say it is what? Diodes and semiconductors. Number five, for ohmic conductors, the resistance always remain constant and for non-ohmic conductors the resistance is always increasing and the temperature also will increase. Uh, grade 11, let's look at this simple uh, example so that to get ourselves get up. Now we have, we're saying, the example says if the resistance of an electric ion is 50 ohm and the current that is passing through that resistor is 3.2 ampere then through the resistors find the voltage between the two points the voltage it simply mean you must find the potential difference are we together great uh, great levels then we know that every time before we do any calculation, we must write down the given data. For this example, our given data are R is equals to 50 ohm and current is equals to 3.2 ampere. Our unknown in this problem, it is what? It is potential difference. We don't know how much it is potential difference. Great levels, by writing this uh, given data, we know that when we look on our formula sheet, we are able to choose the correct formula. And how do we choose the correct formula? We choose the formula that have these three uh, 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 data. That has resistance, that has current, and that has what? Potential difference. Now, we have found the formula which says potential difference is equals to current multiplied by what? Multiply by uh, resistance. Now, uh, grade levels, by only choosing this correct formula, then you already score yourself one mark. Then, but that one mark, it, it will get it if you can do step two, which is substitution. Even if you didn't substitute uh, correctly, 
but you have substituted the right uh, data, then we will always give you that one mark for choosing the correct formula. But if you substitute correctly, then we give you, now we're going to give you two marks. One mark for choosing the correct formula and one mark for substituting correctly. Then the answer, the final answer, it must go with what? The units. Then you get the third mark. Then in this problem, that means this problem is out of three marks. Then we say V is equal to IR. And then we substitute, we know that our I, which is current, is, three, is equal to 3.2 ampere. Multiply by what? Our resistance, which is 50 ohms. Then when you calculate 3.2 with 50, it gives us 160 volts. Okay? Our second example, grade 11, it says an EMF source of 8.0 volts is connected to a purely resistive electrical appliance. And here they said, example of an appliance is what? A light bulb. An electric current of 2.0 ampere flows through that appliance. Consider the conducting wire to be resistance free. Calculate the resistance offered by the electrical appliance. That is what we need to calculate. That is our question. It says calculate the resistance offered by the electrical appliance. As a norm, grade 11, we say write down the given data so that you are able to choose the correct formula. Now, our given data, we know that they said potential difference is how much? Our EMF is how much? Is 8.0 volts. And our current, grade 11, is 2.0 ampere. What we are supposed to calculate is the resistance. We don't know how much is the resistance. That is why we put a question mark for resistance. Then the formula that, suit, that is suitable for this calculation will be R, which is resistance, is equal to potential difference, divide by what? Divide by current. And then now, as we substitute, we say our potential difference or our EMF is equal to 8 volts divided by what? 2 ampere, which gives us what? A8 divided by 2 is how much? Is 4. We go on uh, with, now we're looking at power. What is power? We know that power is the rate at which a work is done or is the rate at which energy is being converted. Okay. Now, we have uh, the following formulas that will help us to calculate power. The first one says power is equal to current squared multiplied by what? Resistance. The second one, it says power is equal to current multiplied by what? By potential difference. The third one, it says power is equal to potential different squared divided by what? By resistance. And then P in this case it stands for power and which is measured in what? Not walls. It's measured in watts. Ne? A great levels. It's not wall. It's what? It's what? W A W T. And then the symbol for what is W. And then current I stands for current, which is measured in ampere, and the symbol for ampere is capital letter A. Then we know that resist uh, R is for resistance and is measured in ohms, and the symbol for ohm is what? Sigma. Okay, 
Lastly, V is for potential difference, and sometimes it will mean what? EMF. It, it is measured in what? It in volts, grade levels, and we know that the symbol for volts is what? Is capital letter V. Okay, now, remember power and energy, they go hand in hand. W now we're going to look at what? Work or energy. Because work and energy, they are working together and they are me both measured in what? In joules. Okay, we say now, what is energy? And then energy, we say what? Is the ability of doing ability to do work or can say yes is the a ability to do work then we've learned from grade 10 that w which is work is equals to charge multiplied by potential difference and we will know that from grade 10 charge that we're talking about is equals to what current multiplied by time and we also learned that potential difference is equal to cu uh, current multiplied by resistance. Then, by having these three formulas, we can come up with these three formulas for work or for energy. We say now, work is equal to potential difference multiplied by current and multiplied by what? time or we can say potential difference is equals to uh, 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 sorry work is equals to potential difference squared multiplied by time divided by resistance or we can say work is equals to current squared multiplied by resistance and multiplied by time then we simplifying the symbols. We say I remember is for current and is measured in ampere. Re R is for resistance and is measured in ohms. V is for potential difference and is measured in volts. W is work and is measured in joules. T it is time and is measured in seconds. Okay, we have. Some examples that we need to look at, grade elevens. We the first example, it's a multiple choice. It says, which one of the following graph best represent the relationship between the current and potential difference of a conductor which obeys Ohm's law? By looking in all these four uh, graphs grade levens, we know that once we look at Ohm's law, current and uh, potential difference, they give us what? A straight, straight line. Because we said the relationship between the current and the potential difference, it is what? Directly proportional. That means our answer, it will be D. Our answer will be D. Uh, the second example, it says, the potential difference of the battery in the circuit below is 12 volts. The internal resistance of the battery is negligible, which means we're going to ignore it. Two voltmeters, V1 and V2, are connected to the circuit as shown in the diagram. We can see voltmeter 1 is connected uh, under the switch and voltmeter 2 is connected under the first bulb. Remember bulb is the one that is going to give us what? The resistance. Okay, now we have four options to choose. The question says when the switch is open the correct reading on V1 and V2 will be as follows. Is it A, 12 volts and 12 volts, or B, 
0 for V1 and 12 for V2, or C, 12 for v, uh, V1 or 0 and 0 for v, uh, V2, or lastly is D, 0 for, uh, for V1 and 0 for V2. The correct answer is C, grade, uh, grade 11, is 12 for V1 and 0 for V2. Why? Because when we go back to our circuit, that means uh, the, the, uh, the voltmeter that you see under the switch will be reading the, the, the EMF or the potential difference that was given by the battery. And then there is no uh, a voltage, there is no current that will pass on the first bulb because the switch will be open. That means our second voltmeter will read zero. Okay, the third example, grade 11, is the circuit below is used to determine the resistance of resistor X. Resistor X is there next to 8 ohm grade 11. And then they said our battery is, gives us 12 volts. And then we say now, the 12 volts battery has a negligible internal resistance. That means the internal resistor in the battery, the internal resistance in the battery, we're going to ignore it. When the switch S is closed, the reading on the ammeter is 0 0.5. That means the ammeter will give us 0 0.5 ampere. The first question says state Ohm's law in weights. It says state Ohm's law in weights. And then it is not by mistake that they mentioned state Ohm's law in weights because they don't want you to give us the formula, but they want you to state it in weights. You must write weights there, grade 11. And then we know that, and the second question says, calculate the resistance of the resistor X. You can see uh, grade 11. For question number one, where they ask you to state the Ohm's law, it says it's two marks. Every time when you have to define or state a law, grade 11, you must, you, ma you will be given two marks. And then look, let's look at this calculation. This calculation, they said calculate the resistance of resistor X, which is how many, how many marks? Five marks. Okay, grade 11. Let's look into the solution. Number one, they said state uh, Ohm's law in words. And then this is how we're stating the uh, Ohm's law. It says the potential difference across a conductor is directly proportional to the, cur uh, the current in the conductor when or if the temperature is kept constant. Are we together, grade 11? Yes. Then, number two, let's look there. The first uh, uh, grade 11, we need to write down the given data. And then from the statement, let's go back to the statement. We are given that uh, our, our V is equal to how much? 12 volts. And our current is how much is uh, 0 0.5 volts. What are we looking for? We are supposed to calculate what? Uh, resistance X, which is what? Unknown. Are we together grade 11? Yes. Now, when we go on, let's go to the solutions. We can see now, because now we already know that our V is equal to 12 volts and current is equal to uh, 0 0.5 amperes. And then Rx is 
unknown. Then, but the, the, the potential difference that we are given is for the whole circuit. And the, and the, the current that we are given is for the whole circuit, grid levels. Then we need to calculate the total. We can uh, use the two methods to calculate this, to find the solution to this. Firstly, we, ca we can use what? The total resistance. We can find the total resistance and now minus the given the resistance for one resistor. Remember in the circuit grid level, we are given two resistors that are connected in series. That means in series, when you want the total resistance of this circuit, you're going to add a, 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 a resistance from of 8 ohm and the resistance of X together to get what 8. But now, because now we are doing what? We, 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 we don't have X. We are able to calculate what? We can use this formula here. V total is equals to I R total total in order to come up with what to get the uh, resistance uh, total resistance now our uh, grade levels what we can do is we can say we know that v total is 12 which is equals to okay uh okay which is equals to our current the set is equals to uh, 0 0.5 and then we have our R total. Therefore, grid levels, our R total will be equals to uh, 12 divided by 0, 0,5, which is going to give us what? 24 volts. Uh, 24 ohms, sorry. Okay, let's continue. Our R total is equals to 12 divided by 0 0.5 which is going to give us uh, 24 ohm sorry sorry 24 ohm then because now we have a total resistance then we can say now uh, we can say uh, r r total is equals to what is equals to rx uh, plus 8 ohm. 8 ohm is the one that we're given. Then we say what? Because we're looking for this grid levels, we make this the subject of the formula, then Rx will be equals to R total minus 8. Then we're going to get what? R total we know is how much? Is 24. Then we're going to say 24 minus 8 which is giving us what? 16 ohm. That means our Rx is how, is how much? Is 16 ohm. Negrate uh, 11? Yes. Now, when we go uh, on, we have the multiple choice question again. As a problem, uh, we say, which one of the following combination or of SI units is equivalent to ohm. Okay, it's equivalent to ohm. What is ohm? In order to be able for us to answer this question, we ask ourselves, what is ohm? Ohm is the SI unit for what? For resistance. That means we need to go back and say, okay, now re ohm is for resistance. Then if I say I give the formula for resistance, which is going to give me this. Resistance is equal to potential difference divided by what? Divided by current. Now, for resistance, we know that we have what? Ohm. And which is going to be what? Ohm is equal to what? For potential difference, we know that is what? Volts. And then for current is going to be what? Ampere. 
ampere. And then we check which one is correct. Is it A? Volts per ampere. Is it B? Joules per coulomb. Is it C? Coulomb per second. Is it VAD? Volts multiplied by ampere. But when we check here, it tells us what is volts divided by what? By ampere, which gives us the correct answer to be A, to be A grade levens. Another one, they said the minimum value of the resistance that can be obtained by connecting two ohms, uh, two ohm resistors is. That means we have a R1, R1 and R2. And both of them, they are 4 ohm. That means R1 is equal to 4 ohm. R2 also is equal to 4 ohm. Then, because they are looking for the minimum, that means the lowest, the lowest amount or the, lo the lowest amount that these two resistors can give us which one is that because if we say we're connecting these two resistors in series we know that series is going to give us what rt is equals to r1 plus r2 which is going to give us what 4 plus 4 which is equals to 8 is the 8 lowest on the from the given uh, uh, options no because the options that were given a is one b is two ohms three b c is three ohm and d is eight ohm that means d from our option is already out because it's the highest then when we check on the list we have a one two and three are we together grade levels then which connection can we use in order to get the lowest? Because we know that series is out because it's giving us the highest uh, value of the two resistors. What if we connect them in parallel? Then in parallel, we're going to have what? 1 over, uh, one over RT is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 which is 1 over RT is equal to uh, 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4. Then we know that from here, we're going to get what? 1 over RT, which is going to give us what? 4 divided by what? Divided by 2. Then which is going to give us what? When we make RT the subject of the formula, then that means we'll be having what? 4 over 2. Then it gave us what? 2 ohm. That is the lowest resistance that we can get when we, uh, we, we, we combine uh, two resistors that are both 4 ohms. Are we still okay, uh, grade levels? Yes. Okay. Let's continue. This is another one, a multiple choice question. We say, consider the second diagram below. Build A, okay. The diagram below, it has three bulbs. Bulb A, bulb B, and bulb C. And these bulbs, they are identical. That means they, they are the same. That means the any magnitude that is given to them, it will be the same. If you need the resistance, will be the same. If you need the current that is passing, yes. Okay, if you need the resistance, it will be the same. Then we're saying now, uh, which one of the following is correct when the switch is closed? When we close the switch there, we can see C and B, they are connected in parallel. And... C and B, they are connected in series to bulb A. Then we're saying bulb A and bulb A is equal to, okay, the current that passes at bulb A 
is equal to the current that is passing at bulb uh, B. Is that correct? Okay. Number uh, B, it says the current that is passing on bulb A is greater than the current that is passing on bulb B. Okay. C, it says the current that is passing on bulb A is less than the current that is passing on bulb B. Okay. They say now two uh, two uh, uh, the car if you take the current is passing on bulb A, you multiply it by two. It will be equals to the current is passing on bulb B. Okay? What is the correct answer, uh, grade levels? We know that a uh, current uh, in parallel is being divided. That means the current that is passing in bulb A, it will be, you need to add the current that is passing on bulb uh, uh, C and the current that is passing on bulb B in order to get the current that is passing on bulb A. That means the current that is passing on bulb A is greater than the current that will be passing in, in on bulb B. What does that mean? That means we're going to say that because we know that the current that is passing on bulb A will be equals to the current that is passing on bulb B and plus the current that is passing on bulb C. Therefore, this one will never be equals to this. Are we together? The current that is passing on bulb B will never be equals to the current that is passing on bulb A or will never be bigger than the, uh, bul uh, the current that is passing on bulb A. Why? Because this, we need A, the current that is passing on B and the current that is passing on C to, be, to give us what? The current that is passing on A. That means, grade 11, the correct answer is B. Are we together, grade 11? Yes. Okay. We are continuing. We have a long questions. Let's look at this long question, uh, grade 11. They said four cells of each with an EMF of 1.5 are connected in series with an ammeter with an ammeter, switch S and combination of resistor R and resistor of 4 ohm and resistor of 6 ohm, as shown in the diagram. Are we together? We can see here we have resistor R that we don't know how much is it, and then we have a resistor 4 ohm and resistor 6 ohm. And we also have what? And uh, we have current, uh, the instrument that measures current, which is what? A meter. Then we have what? Four cells. Each cell they said is what? Is 1.5 volts. Then if you're going to say each and if each one of, of, of if each one of these cells is 1.5, then how much will be total? EMF of the battery. Now we're not going to talk about the cell, we're talking about what? The battery. How much will be what? Will be the total uh, EMF of the battery. Then we say 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 1.5. It gives us how much? 6 volts. It gives us what? 6 volts. Now when we continue, with this problem and uh, great levels, I'm going to ask you to take snapshot of this because you can see we're moving slides to slides in order to get to the questions. This is the statement and there and it is with a diagram in the circuit. Then now we also we continue with what? With the problem and statement. Number one it says which law is represented by the underlying 
uh, uh, underline phrase above. Okay? That is the question. Then we continue. They said, the switch is now closed. And six resistors, R1 to R6, each with a different resistance, are placed in a statement, in a, are placed for R. In order for us to get R, this R that we have in the circuit, this R here, we need, we are using six resistors, ne? and then R1 up to R6. And then they said one at a time. That means we are changing them. We are replacing R with different resistors. And then R1, they said is how much? It is 1.2. R1, when you put R1, you get the voltage. V2, it gives you what? It gives you 1.2 volts. R2, you get what? 1.4 volts. R3, you get 1.9 volts. R4, you get 2.4 volts. R5, you get 2.9 volts. R6, you get 3.6 volts. And then what about the reading? When we replace this, uh, the R, the resistor R, we replace it with R1. Then we get what? From the reading from ammeter will be 0 0.5. For R2, we get what? 0 0.6 ampere. R3, we get 0 0.8 ampere. R4, then we get what? 1 ampere. And then R5, we get 1.2 ampere. And for R6, we get what? We get 1.5 ampere. Now, uh, grid levels, it means that when the reading on the voltmeter 2 on voltmeter 2. Which one is voltmeter 2? Is this one. Can you see? This is the voltmeter 2. Are we together? This is voltmeter 2. Then the voltmeter 2, when we change we, when we change this resistance, we are looking at the reading on this voltmeter 2 and the ammeter. Ne grade 11? Yes. Now, when voltmeter 2, it says uh, 1.2. The ammeter, it says 0 0.5. Can you see? Now, when ammeter, when a voltmeter 2, it says 1.4. The, 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 uh, and the ammeter will say what? 0 0.6. When voltmeter 2 says 1.9, then the ammeter will say what? 0 0.8. When ammeter 2, it says 2.4, the, uh, the uh, ammeter will say what? The voltmeter 2, it says uh, 2.4. Then the ammeter will say what? 1 ampere. Then when the voltmeter 2 says 2.9 volts, then the ammeter says 1.2. Then voltmeter 2 when it says 3.6, then the ammeter will say what? 1.5. Are we together uh, grade levels? Yes. Then we are continuing with the questions. Question two, remember question one they said. Let's go to question one. Let's look there. Question one says, which one is represented by the underlying phrase above? The phrase above is talking about voltmeter, is talking about uh, the ammeter. And we know the voltmeter is what? Potential difference. Ammeter is what? Current. Then, which one, which law we know that is using the potential difference and current. Okay, we'll come to the uh, uh, answer after this. Let's look at uh, number two. It says, use the attached graph paper to draw a graph of the potential difference versus current using data in the table. That means you go back to this diagram, to this table, and you copy this table. I will prefer that you take a snapshot of this slide and this slide. Let's start with this slide here. Take a snapshot of this slide, grade 11. Take a snapshot of this uh, slide. And 
take a snapshot of this slide so that you are able to follow because we are changing we are interchanging the slides as we're dealing with this problem let's look at this problem take a snapshot of this uh, slide grade levens take a snapshot of this slide take a snapshot of this slide okay now we're going to the questions now it says the question two it says use the graph paper to draw the graph of what potential difference versus current and grade elevens remember when we draw the graph we start with the heading then after we draw we wrote down the heading we do what we draw the x axis and the y axis y axis and the x axis are we together yes and we know that in this a law when we work with this law we saying that current must be where on the y axis and the potential difference will be on the x axis are we together our uh, grade elevens yes now remember you can see there we have given what four marks for this then after first thing right give the heading to your graph then draw x a, 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 a y and x axis and label them and when you label them you can say current in what in ampere you must also write the unit on the axis you don't just say current and then potential difference no grade elevens we say current in ampere then potential difference in volts are we together grade elevens yes now after you have wrote your uh, x and y axis you have labeled your x and y axis now grade elevens what is need to be done is to do what is to to uh, put the points are we together uh, grade elevens how do we put the points we are going back to the table we can see that the first point on the on the ammeter on y must be 0 0.5 are we together and on voltmeter it must be 1.2 are we together at grade elevens that means on your y you're gonna do dotted line that meets you're gonna start uh you're gonna uh label your axis uh, 0, 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 or 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 up to 1.5 and then your x will be uh we can say uh 0 0.4 or you can say 0 0.8 0 uh 0 0.8 1.6 uh 2.4 3.6 like that uh our grade elevens then or you can choose any scale that will be suitable and will be fit in your book are we together grade elevens choose any scale that will fit in your book then after you've drawn that you are able to plot this point that means when you plot them you make sure that 1.2 it goes with what is 0 0.5 1.4 it goes with what 0 0.6 1.9 it goes with 0 0.8 2.4 it goes with 1 2.9 it goes with 1.2 3.6 it goes with what 1.5 are we together and then after you put you plotted those points then you draw a best fit line the line that will pass will will pass in most of the points if it's not all the points but it must pass in most of the of the points that you have plotted then by doing so we know that that it will look like it will give you the shape of your graph and okay that is how we answer number two and then number three it says 
What does the gradient of the graph represent? We talked about it when look when we're doing or we're looking on the on the on, on the theory. We said what? Yes, the gradient is what is going to give us v over is going to give us v over i, isn't it? Then what is v over i? Okay. Number four, if the voltmeter two is only connected across the four ohm resistor. How will the gradient of the how will the gradient of the graph write down increase, decrease, or stay the same? How will the gradient of the graph changes? Okay? How will the gradient of the graph changes? Ne. Okay. Number five, if the 4 ohm resistor is removed. How will the gradient of the graph change? Increase, decrease, stay the same. Okay? Then, number six, calculate the resistance of the resistor R3. The resistance of the resistor R3. using the value in the table. What will be the resistance of the resistor R3? Okay, five marks. We're gonna use the, 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 the value in the table. Then, lastly, calculate the energy dissipated in resistor R4 in 10 seconds. Calculate the energy dissipated in R4 in 10 seconds. Okay, this is, we looked at our problems. Ne? We looked at our problem. Now, what will be the solutions for this? What will be the solution? Please, grade 11, try to do this. Try to do this. I'm going to give you a few minutes to do this. You have a few minutes to do this. Thank you. Remember the question one? It says, which law is this? Which law is this? Which law is being used in this problem? That is number one. Then number two, you must draw what? Uh, you must use a graph paper to draw the graph. And I've given you how do we draw the graph. Number three, what does the gradient of the graph represent? Remember the graph is what? Current versus what? Uh, potential difference. Are we together? Current versus the potential difference. Then number four, if we connect V2 is only connected on four ohms resistor, how will that, uh, the gradient of the graph change? How will that affect the gradient of the graph? Will it increase? Will it decrease? Or will it stay the same? Okay. Will it stay the same? Okay. Or increase or decrease? Okay. Number five. If the four ohm resistor is removed, how will the gradient of the graph changes? How will the gradient changes? If we remove four ohm resistor, Will the gradient of the graph increases or decreases or stay the same? How will be affected? Number six, calculate the resistance of resistor three using the value in the table. And then number seven, calculate the energy dissipated in Res, uh, resistor 
R4 in 10 seconds. We have given the time there. We know that when you check on the table, we are given the values where we know the voltage, which is potential difference, and we know the, 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 the current, which is in amperes. Okay, grade levels. Let's continue with the, our solutions. I'm hoping that our uh, grade levels, you manage to take the snapshot of this slide. If you didn't do so, please do so. Take snapshot of this slide. And take snapshot of this slide. And also take snapshot of this slide so that you are able to follow what are we talking about in this problem. Okay, uh, great levels. Now, let's go to the solutions, great levels. Uh, we look at number one, the law that has been, that we are following in this problem, it is what? Ohm's law. It is Ohm's law. Are we together, grade elevens? I'm hoping that you all got it correct. Uh, let's look at the graph. You can see my graph. It has uh, both. It has the heading there. The graph of potential difference versus current. And then you can see there from the graph. Yes, the points. Look at the points. We first drawn the points, and thereafter, we plotted a best fit line. The line that touches all the points. Are we together? You can look at it. Copy down. This is how we draw the graph. And that is four marks. That is four, four marks. Okay, grade levels. That is number two. The graph is answer for number two. The answer for number two. Now, we are continuing. Number three, question three. It says, what does the gradient of the graph represent? That is for one mark. It is one mark because it's very, very easy. It says what? The resistance of the parallel connection. The resistance of the parallel connection. Because why? Look at the, the our, let's look at our, our, uh, 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 can you see? Yes. The gradient or the resistance of the parallel connection. Okay? And then, number four, question number four, it says, if the voltmeter V2 is only connected across four, four resistor, resistor, a uh, four ohm resistor, how will the gradient of the graph change? Then the answer, it says, it will stay the same. The answer says it will stay the same. Then the question five, it says, if Q4 is removed, if uh, a four ohm ampere resistor is removed, if the four ohms resistor is removed, then what will happen? Will the graph, the gradient of the graph increases or decreases or stay the same? Then the answer says it will increase. Are we together? Yes. Now, number six, question six, it says calculate the resistor the resistance of resistor R3 using the 
value in the table. Using the value in the table. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Using the value in the table. Here is our table. And then from R3, we can see that R3 is what? The voltmeter, the, the voltmeter read what? 1.9, while the ammeter read 0 0.8. The voltmeter read 1.9, while the, re, uh, uh, the ammeter reads, uh, reads 0 0.8. Okay? Then from there, 6, the uh, uh, V for 6, Uh, we say six, number six, we have what? For R3, we have what? Uh, uh, v is equals to, how much is V? Quick. 1.9 and 0 0.8. 1.9 volts and uh, I is equals to? 0 0.8 ampere what uh, 0 0.8 ampere then they want us to calculate what the resistor resistor r3 which is gonna be what v over I how much is that? Uh, one point nine divided by eight is gonna be two two point what ohms two point sixteen yeah two point something ohms. Uh, sorry, uh, grade elevens. I don't have a calculator with me at the moment. Okay, let's look at problem two. Second problem. It says grade eleven learner suggests the wiring uh, scheme below for light bulbs in a small townhouse. In our townhouse, you can see that we have a kitchen, we have a lounge, we have a bathroom and we have a wall way. Negative elevens. And then in the kitchen, there are four bul uh, uh, bulbs. Each bulb is 40 watts. That means the bulbs that are in the kitchen are of the same, they are identical. And then in the wall way, we have one bulb, which is of 60 watts. In the bathroom, we have one, a uh, resist a uh, 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 bulb of 50 watts in the bedroom we have one bulb of 40 watts and in the lounge we have what we have one bulb of 60 watts then uh the power source is giving us 220 volts are we together and then how many uh, 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 voltmeters do we have? We have a V1, V2, V3, V4. And then they said V1 is how much? Uh, V1 is 60 volt, is 80 volts. V2 is 40 volts. V3 is 60 volts. V4 is 40 volts. Are we together? Yes, two, four. Yes. Now we're saying, we continue. Please, uh, grade elevens, take snapshot of this page or take a snapshot of this slide. Take a snapshot of this slide. Take a snapshot of this slide. Okay. 
and also take a snapshot of this slide, grid levels, take a snapshot of this slide. Thank you. Then the problem that we are facing, it says the light bulb in the circuit above show their power output in the different rooms where the power output for V1 is 80, for V2 is 40 volts, for V3 is 60 volts, and for V4 is 40 volts. Okay, grade 11. Now they say, calculate the energy transferred by the launch, by the launch bulb in two minutes. Okay, calculate the energy transfer by the launch bulb, the bulb in the launch in two seconds, in two minutes, uh, uh, sorry. Number two, it says, calculate the resistance of each of the bulbs, of the light bulbs in the kitchen. Calculate the resistance of each of the resistor, resistors. Calculate the resistance of each of the bulbs in the kitchen. Three, if the combined power of the light bulb in the bathroom and a bedroom is 90 watts, what is their effecti effective resistance? Or what is their combined resistance? Okay? Lastly, show that the total resistance of the circuit is 147 ohm show that the total resistance of the circuit is 147 ohm. Okay? <coughs> number one, uh, the answer for number one, remember number one they said calculate the energy transfer by the bulb in two minutes. Then remember what you write down the given data we're given power in watts. Are we together? And that you can see it from the bulb, from the circuit. You can see it from the circuit. Can you see? Yes. Then from there, we say it's what? 60 watts. It was 60 watts because we talk about what? The whole way because of what? 40 volts. Ne. Then we continue by saying uh, the power is what? The power that is given to that bulb or to that, yes, bulb is 60. That means you're going to say P is equals to, then our given data for number one, we're going to say P is equals to 60 watts. And then, uh, Time, time well, that we're given is two minutes, which is equals to 120 seconds, because each and every minute is equals to what? Is equals to uh, 60 seconds. One minute is equals to 60 seconds. Then now, the formula, because now we are looking for what? The question number, question number one says, calculate the energy, calculate the energy, then we're going to say W is unknown. Can you see? Yes. Now, the formula that we can use because we have P, we have T, we have a W, then we can say what? P is equals to W over change in T, which is going to be what? Okay, then we're going to say P is equals to what? Is equals to 60 equals to W divided by 120. Therefore, uh, W is equals to 60 multiplied by 120, which gives us 7,200 joules. Can you see? Yes, yes, yes. Are we together? That is a simple way 
we can solve we can solve number one and then number two they say to us let's go back to the question calculate the resistance of each of the bulbs in the kitchen and then where is the kitchen let's go back to the circuit we can see the kitchen has how many three bulbs and each bulb has a power of 40 watts are we together each bulb has a power of 40 watts and all these bulbs they are connected in what in parallel all these bulbs are connected in parallel okay let's go and see now we need to calculate what the resistance of each bulb ne resistance of each bulb we know that this is how we're going to do it we know the power we know the given data we're given what p is equals to 40 this is for each and every bulb is 40 watt and then we're given also we're given what the uh, the, 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 the potential difference which is equals to what 80 volts and then what are we looking for resistor that is why we put a question mark on it then the formula that we can use on this equation because we have a p we have a v we have a r we need the formula that has a p and we, which has, has what v that is the formula that we can use then there we're gonna say what 40 is equals to uh, 80 squared sorry 80 squared divided by r therefore r is equals to uh, 80 squared divided by 40 which is gonna give me what 160 ohm are we together yes then that is the answer for number two then number three number three it says uh, if the combined power of the bulb in the bedroom and the bathroom is 90 watts the power when you combine the power is 90 watts what is the uh, effective combined resistance let's go back to the second and see what is the connection can you see the bathroom and the bedroom they are connected in what in parallel they are connected in parallel can you see them here they are connected in parallel are we together then when we go on we say they want the resistance let's go then we're gonna okay here we have the given data there we're given what p they said p is equals to 90 watts okay from the statement they said if the combined power of the uh, uh, the bulb in the bathroom and the bedroom is 90 watts then we need to calculate the resistance now we have that and then we know that the voltage that is given for them is what is 60 both of them the potential difference there is what is 60 uh, 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 volts then we're looking for what we're looking for r we're looking for r then in order to get r also we're using the same formula which we say p is equals to v squared over r which is gonna be 90 is equals to a uh, 60 squared divided by r therefore therefore r is equals to a uh, 60 squared divided by what divided by 90 yes divided by 90 which is gonna give us what uh 40 
Then we're going to get what? R is equals to 40 ohm. Are we together? We say 60 squared divided by what? By uh, 60 squared, remember. When you say 60 multiplied by 60, it's going to give you 3,600. 3,600 divided by 90, it gives you 40 ohms because the unit is very, very important. The unit, it is very, very important. Okay, then, then number four. Let's go to question four. Question four says, show that the total resistance of the circuit is 147 ohms. 147 ohms. Then, yes, this is what we have. Ne. The total, uh, we're looking at the connection first. The first connection there that you see here. We have R1, R2, and R3. Can you see? No, 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 no. Yes, R1, R2, and R3. This is the connection in the is the connection in the kitchen. This gives us the connection in the kitchen because it, they are connected in parallel. Three bulbs are connected in parallel. And after we substituted, because we have calculated the resistance of the resistors in the, when we go back, let's go back to this uh, number. Yes, uh, we got it from number, wait, let me see, go back from the question. Yes, you can see from the diagram, the kitchen, it has three bulbs, and all three bulbs are connected in parallel. Are we together? Yes. Then, from there, we say, from there, we say, uh, the set calculates the resistance of the bulb of the each bulb in the kitchen. That is number two. Then number two, we, uh, the answer for number two, we found it to be, uh, we'll calculate the power. Oh, sorry, sorry, they said calculate, calculate the resistance of each bulb in the kitchen. Number two, one, two. The resistor was 160 each. Then now, when we go to this, it must be 160 each. Ne? Here is a mistake. It's supposed to be 160. One divided by 160. You can see each bulb is 160. Then the total, it gives us this. And then that means the total resistance in the kitchen is 53.33. And then now, for the launch, we know that the resistance is what? Is 26. Then, which is equal to the one in the wall. Okay. Then the bathroom and the, uh, the bedroom and the bathroom, it gives us 40 ohms. Then when you take this, add to this, and add to this, times, remember this one is for the wall, and it's also is for the launch. Are we together? Then it's going to be R total. R total is equals to R uh, kitchen plus R uh, launch plus R wall plus R ba bedroom and bathroom. Bedroom and bathroom. Ne. Then it's going to be equals to what? 53.33 plus uh, 26.67 plus 26.67 plus also uh, 40. Then the total gives us what? 146. 
0.67 ohm, which you can equa equate it to one, oh, is the same as the one, yes, is 147 ohm. Are we together, grade levels? Yes. Now, the third problem. Third problem, it says, please, grade levels, take snapshot of these problems take a snapshot as we go to the problems because it'll be jumping from one to another slide okay now it says here the second diagram shown shows three resistors connected to a battery with a negligible internal resistor that means we ignore the internal resistor grid levels two resistors of six ohm and ten ohms are connected in series Two resistors, that, uh, two resistors okay, of 6 ohm and 10 ohm are connected in series. Can you see them? This is our two that are talking about connected in series. Then it says also this combination is, con this combination is connected in parallel to the 4 ohm resistor. You can see this and this are in parallel. When you look at this con con uh, connection, it is what parallel now. Because when you add these two, then this and this, they are in parallel. Now, which is the functioning, which is the functioning at the power? The whole 4 ohm is, uh, is functioning at the, what? With at the power of the rate power rating 36 ohms. That means the power here, it will be 36 ohms. Can you see that? Yes. Then they say to you, define power in weights. Define power in weights. We know that power is what? Is the rate at which energy is being converted. Or the rate at which energy is being transferred. Okay, number two, calculate the following. Current in the ammeter. What is the current that is passing through the ammeter, this ammeter? And then 2.2, calculate the potential difference across four ohm resistor. The potential difference that will pass here. How much is the potential difference there? Number 2.3, Calculate the current in the 10 ohm resistor. The current that is passing here, that is number three. And then four, calculate the current in the battery. The current in the battery. Okay, now let's go. Let's go. Uh, we say, Number one, power is the rate at which electrical energy is converted in a electric circuit. Power is the rate at which electrical energy is converted in the electric circuit. Then let's go back to the questions. Number two, they said, calculate the current in the, uh, in the ammeter. We need to calculate the current in the a meter. Then we know that we, what we given is what? We have P power of what? 36 watt. Remember given data? We must start with the given data. Then we also given what? The resistor. Resistance of what? For ohm. And then we are looking for what? Current is current is unknown current is unknown then the formula that have power current and a uh, power resistor and current then it is what p is equals to okay 
Yes. Is what? P is equals to current squared uh, multiplied by what? By resistor. Then we know that the power is how much? 36 watt is equals to current that we are looking for. Um, squared multiply by what? Multiply by 4. Re our resistor is 4 ohm. Now current squared is equals to what? Uh, 36 divided by 4. Then how much is 36 divided by 4? Then 36 divided by 4, it gives us 9. Then which is going to give us 9? Then current will be equals to 3 ampere. Are we together? Grade 11s? Yes. And then number 2. Let's go back to the questions. Number 2, it says calculate the potential difference across 4 ohm resistor. Calculate the potential difference across 4 ohm resistor. The value that we are given, the data that we are given for that, we have what? Also power. We are given power, which is 36 wa uh, uh, watt. And then we are given what? Uh, uh, the current, which we calculated, which is this one. The current is equals to 3 ampere. Then we are we're looking wa for what? V. V is unknown. Are we together? The current, this three that you see here, is the one that is given. Is the one that is the one that we have calculated in 2.1. Then now we are able to do what to put in the values. You can see now P is equals to VI is the formula that we're gonna use because we are our 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 given data it says we have given P, we have given current, and we're looking for what for V. That means P is equals to IV. When we, that means we're going to have what? 33, 36 is power, and then 3 is current. Then we're looking for V. Then when you make V the subject of the formula, that means you're going to say V is equals to 36 divided by 3, where V is equals to what? 12 volts. 36 divided by 3 is 12. Negative uh, 11. Yes. Or you can use this method here. That is given P is equals to V squared uh, multiplied by R, where power is 36, V squared is unknown, then multiply by 4. Our resistance, we know that is what our resistor is. Resistance is 4 ohm. Then we just 36 divide, uh, 36 divide by 4. Hmm? No, 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 no. There is a mistake here. This is supposed to be what? Divide. This is divide. You know? Our formula says P is equals to V squared divided by, by R. Not multiply. Ne? It's divided by R. Then from here, we're going to say, therefore, 36 is equals to V squared divided by what? By 4. Ne? Then from here, we're going to say uh, V squared is equals to what? 36 multiply by 4 which is how much how much 36 multiply by 4 is going to give us 1 4 is it 1 4 4 yes 1 4 4 then the square root of 1 4 4 is equals to 12 volts ne the square root of 1 4 4 is going to give us what 12 volts okay uh let's continue then solution 3 it says, the question, what is the question three? Question three says, calculate the current in 10 ohm resistor. The current that will be passing in 10 ohm. It says here, we have that, we know that we have what? Our R is, or oh, calculated the current. Then we're saying, yes, the current, then R, 10 it says what is 16 ohm then uh, the volt is equals to 12 that we volts that we just calculated now in number two then now we're looking for what i which is unknown then 
the formula that we can use, we can say I is equals to uh, V over R, which is going to be what? V is how much? Our V is 12, and then our R is 16. Then which is going to give us how much? We have 0 0.75 ampere as our answer. Then number four, question four, let's go back to the question. They said calculate the current in the battery. Calculate the current in the battery. The current in the battery, we know that the ca total current is equal to current one plus current two, plus, which is going to give us what? We have current. The first current that you got is 3 ampere plus what? The second current, which is this one, is 0 0.75. Then we're going to get it as what? 3.75 as the total current. Are we together, grade 11? Yes. Any question, grade 11? Okay. Uh, number four. Problem number four. We have this problem. We say now, study the energy consumption of the electrical appliance in the following table. Define the term power as it is relates to the electrical circuits. Let's look at our table. In our table, we are given what? Uh, the cell phone charger. The cell phone charger, it says the voltage, it must be 240. And the ampere or the, the ammeter, it will reach 150 milliampere. Ne? Okay, the electric kettle, the one that you use to make tea, to boil water, 40. It says 220 volts, and it has a power of 600 watts. TV, it is what? It has power of 60 watts. Globe, which is the old type, not the uh, 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 power energy saving. The old one, which is what? 100 watts. Energy saving light, bulb, it has what? 15 watts. Computer, it says 230 volts, and it has the, 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 the ammeter of what? Zero point, the current of 0 0.5 ampere. Lastly, we have an electric iron. Ne? The electric iron, it wants what? Uh, 1.4 kilowatts. And it needs the voltage of a potential difference of 220 volts. That is what our table says. We have two, four, six, seven appliances. Now, the question says, calculate the power requires requirements of the mobile cell phone charger. Okay, that is question number one. Question number two, which devices has the highest power requirements? Which appliance, which device needs more power? Number three, calculate the current that electric kettle will feed from the supply. Will feed from the supply. Calculate the current that electric kettle will feed from the supply. If a unit of electricity cost 165 cent at an applied municipality, calculate how much it will cost for the family if they use the electric kettle for 15 minutes. Wow. Now it's, we're going home. This problem is taking us home. If we use the kettle for 15 minutes, and the cost is one rand 65 cent. How much 
will that cost us? How much will that cost us? Then, ah, question one, calculate the power required for the mobile charger. Now, if your charger, it says the voltage, uh, uh, the voltage must be 240 volts and the current must be 150 milli ampere. Then how much, uh, 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 what is the power that is required for that cell phone charger? Then we say now, the formula, because now we're given what? We're given power, we've given power, uh, uh, we've given what? The, we're looking for power, ne? the power is unknown, then we've given for potential difference, which is going to be 240, and current is going to be what? Uh, 150 times 10 to the exponent negative 3, ne? because it's milli. Ne, is milli. Let's go to the table and see. 150 milli ampere. A milli is 10 to the exponent negative 3. That means it's 0, 0, 0,00. Okay, now we're saying now, if we have this, which formula can we use? P is equals to VI, isn't it? Yes. Then now we just straight substitute. We have 240 multiplied by 150 times 10 to the exponent negative 3. Ne, then that will give us what? Uh, 36 watts. That is the amount of power is, that is needed to charge your phone or for using your charger. Then number two, let's go back to number two. It says, which device has the, the highest power? Highest power, it is what? 1.4 kilowatt. 1.4 kilowatt are grade 11. It means... Uh, let's go there. 1.4, we said, we see that kettle, it's the set is 1.4 kilowatts, which is the same as what? 1.4 times what? Times 1,000 watt. Can you see? Kilo, it means what? Times 1,000. <coughs> then it's going to give us what? 1,400 watts. And you can see from all these devices in the table, <coughs> there is no device that has 1,400, that is higher than 1,400. All of these devices, they have lower power. But the one that has higher power is the iron. Ne? That is why the answer for number two is what? Is iron. Then number three, grade 11. Uh, number three, it says, the question says, calculate the current that electric kettle will feed to the supply. Calculate what? The current. We need to calculate what? The current. Now, number three, the current, in order to be able to calculate the current, we have the power of what? Let's see. Calculate the current that the kettle, not the iron. Yes. The kettle, let's go to the kettle. Look at the kettle. The kettle has a power of 600 watts, isn't it? And the 220 voltage. That is why now we all know that from the kettle, we have what? P is equal to 600 watt. And then uh, V is equal to 220 volts. Ne. Then we need what? They said calculate what? The current. Then in order for us to be able to calculate the current, this is the correct formula that we need to use. P is equal to V multiplied by I. Power is equal to uh, potential difference multiplied by what? By a current. Potential difference multiplied by current. Then we know our power is, six, is 600 watts. And then our potential difference is 220. Then when you say a uh, current is equal to 600 divided by 220 it will give you what 2.37 ampere are we together grade levens yes yes uh we continuing we continuing grade 11 uh number four it says number four it says if a unit of electricity costs one rand 65 at a municipality 
calculate how much it will cost a family if they use the electric kettle for 15 minutes. Our time is 15 minutes. Time that is given to use the kettle is 15 minutes. And then now, for that, this is what we'll be doing. The power, we're given what? We've given time, which is equals to 15 minutes. Ne, 15 minutes. Ne, 15 minutes. And then remember, uh, our work, it must be in hours. That means when we convert this 15 minutes into hours, then we're going to say uh, one hour is equals to uh, 60 minutes, isn't it? Ne? Then if we have a 15, then we're going to have what? Then 60 minutes, 15 minutes, it goes four times into uh, one hour. Can you see? Then you're going to be what? Uh, one hour, 60. This one we're going to divide by what? By 15 and yes. Yes, this one. Okay, okay, okay. Let me just start from there. Okay. Okay, let me do it here. Let me do it here. We have what? We know that one hour is equal to 60 minutes. Okay. Ne. But in order for us to have 15, mi 15 minutes from 60, we need to divide by what? By 4. And here we'll divide also by 4. Isn't it? Then from here, we're going to have what? 15 minutes. Here we're going to have what? 1.4 hours. That means minutes. Can you see? Then 15 minutes is equal to one and a half is equal to a quarter hour. That is, and what is the quarter? 15 minutes is equal to 0 0.25 hours. Are we together? Yes. 15 minutes is equal to 0 0.4 because 0 0.25 is what? 1 over 4. Are we together, uh, grade 11? That is why here we have put what? 0 0.25 uh, hours. Then, because now we have time, which is 0 0.25 hours, and then we have given what? Uh, we have given a power. Power, our power is how much? Uh, our power is 0 0.6. Ne. 0 0.6 because why 0 0.6 because of what let's go back to the table let's go back to the table we look at the kettle kettle it says six 600 watt can you see 600 watts then when we go here we're gonna say when we go here we're gonna say power is what power is 600 okay power is equals to 600 watt. Then if we divide this by 1000, we're going to have what? We're going to have 0 0.6 kilowatt. Can you see? Kilowatt because of what? We divided by what? 1000. Great levels? Yes. Then we have a power and we have time. If you have a power and time and we're looking for what? For energy. Then we're going to say what? We have power, which is 0 0.6 kilowatt, and we have time, which is 0 0.25 hours, and then we have, we're looking for what? <coughs> for energy. Energy is unknown. Therefore, the formula that we're going to use is what? P is equals to W over T, ne? which is the same as what? <coughs> Our, we're going to say now, uh, 0 0.6 is equals to W over 0 0.25. Therefore, W is equals to what? 0. Point, is equals to 0 
multiply by 0 0.225 then which is giving us what 0 0.15 kilowatt per hour kilowatt per hour ne? then they said 1 kilowatt per hour is equal to what is equal to <coughs> 1 run 65 cent. <coughs> that means we're going to say 0 0.15 kilowatt hour multiplied by what? By 165, which is going to give us what? It's going to give us uh, 0 0.15. Point two five. Nah, that means the power, the energy that we need will cost us 25 cents. Okay? Uh, let's look at this problem 7 very quick. Then we say uh, an electric appliance with a resistor Resistance of 20 ohm draw, draws current of 12 ampere from a 20, 240 volts supplied. Calculate the, the power rating of the electric appliance. Number two, the energy or the heat transfer in 20 hours. Then we go and say, the solution for number one because the given data is what the given data were given uh, r is 20 and i is 12 v is 120 r is 20 ohms i is equals to 12 ampere and v is equals to 2 is it 220 or 240 240 240 volts then the first question says we must calculate what the power we need to calculate the power that's why we say p is equals to vi then we know that it's gonna be 240 multiplied by 12 which is equals to what 2880 watts and then number two it says it says uh calculate what calculate the energy or the heat transfer then in order to calculate the heat the energy we need what we're gonna say w is equals to i squared uh, r and then change in time then we know that i is how much is 12 squared plus 20 ne? plus times r uh, times 20 times uh what is it uh times 20 uh, uh 3600 because we have what uh time that is given was the time that is given is 20 20 uh 20 sec uh, 20 minutes then multiply by what multiply by 20 are we together then our answer is gonna be two comma zero seven four times ten to the exponent eight joules are we together yes yes grade 11 or you can use this formula here you can use the second formula that says v multiply by i and multiply by change in time which gives you the same answer grade Levens. Uh, we came to the end of our lesson today. Please, uh, grade levens, continue preparing for junior exam. This topic that we we've did today with you, it will be in uh, your test, your exam, June exam. Thank you very much. <coughs>